Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Our text is not only the gospel lesson, but the words of Paul in the book of Romans chapter 5. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. There was a monk in the ancient world, Telemarchus. He was a country monk. And just like today, country folk and city folk can be a little different. And this little monk, hundreds and hundreds of years during, during the Roman Empire, in fact, he uh, felt God's calling to go to Rome. And so he went. He went to the big city, as it were. And he shows up in Rome, and the whole city is alive, buzzing. Something exciting is happening. For that day, they were going to have in the Colosseum the gladiators. They were going to fight. And everyone was excited, the circus as it was. And the Colosseum, if you don't know, held about 80,000 people. So... They Romans knew how to have a sporting event, as it were. And the whole community was excited in Rome, and, and this little monk uh, goes into the Colosseum. And I mean little in the sense that he was little. And he goes into the Colosseum, and he sees the crowds, and you could be amazed by such a thing. And after he looks in the crowd, he looks down, and he sees the first of these two gladiators come out onto the crowd, come out on the the uh, stadium floor, and the crowd goes wild, and they're excited, and these men are armed up and armored and sword, and they're ready to go at it, and the crowd's just excited. You could, they're chanting and cheering. It's like any other sporting event that you would know today at a Coliseum. And finally, uh, he looks down, and he realizes they plan to fight to the death, hence the swords. And this little monk goes to the edge and he screams at him, but they don't hear him at all. So he jumps onto the field in the middle of the stadium in front of 80,000 people and he walks out and he stands between these two behemoth men and he says, for the love of Jesus, stop! And then the crowd mocks him and laughs at him and says all sorts of things to the gladiators to do to the monk. And finally, they're not sure what to do. So the one gladiator, he pushes the little monk aside, and he goes flying. These are strong, powerful men. And then the, uh, the monk gets back up, and he runs, and he puts, gets between them again, and he says, for the love of Jesus, stop! And the crowd starts chanting, kind of jokingly, I'm sure, you know, Run, it, run your sword through the monk. Get him out of there. And all, it's finally, the, as the, the gladiators, they don't know what to do. So one gladiator takes his sword, and he just puts it right into that monk's stomach. And he falls to the ground. And he gets back up, and through his robes, it would look like, kind of like my robes, you could see the blood pulling. And he pulls out his arms, and he says, for the love of Jesus, Stop! And then 80,000 people were silent. And then all of a sudden, one gentleman gets up. And he walks out of that stadium. And then another. And then another. And next thing you know, as that monk dies there on that floor, it's empty. 80,000 people are gone. And that was the last time gladiators ever took the Colosseum floor in Rome. Our Lord makes peace. He makes peace with each other and he makes peace with our Heavenly Father. It's kind of interesting. Paul tells the theology of it, but Jesus is actually going to live it out today with that woman at the well. What a wonderful story. I love the story. I hope you all love it. It's an amazing story. Our Lord is there, he gets himself in front of a woman who truly had no idea, and quite frankly, no expectation of what she was going to receive that day. For she was a woman with no peace. In fact, that woman was at war. She was at war with her community. She was at war with men. 
She was at war with herself, and she was at war with God. That was a woman who did not have peace. Middle of the day, she walks to the well to get her water. I think you know, if you don't remember the story well, but why? The women in the community do not like her at all. Maybe she doesn't like them either. Maybe she's been shunned. Maybe she's been pushed out. Maybe she's just sick of being told how wicked she is. All right. So be it. And then for men, five husbands and the one that she's living with. Now, I bless you all to have wonderful marriages and one ends, you start another one. But at the fifth one, when you come into Pastor Schmidt's office, we're going to have a very long conversation. <laughs> and she's a Samaritan. The Samaritans were, the Jewish people made it very clear to the Samaritans. God hates you. She's at war. And then Jesus comes and he sits down there and he asks for a simple thing, a glass of water. And in the midst of that, they're going to have a long conversation about water and drinking, eternal life and spiritually. And it keeps building up from the basics of life to the basics of God. And she says she recognizes that Jesus is a prophet, so she's going to have a theological debate. I love theological debates with Jesus in the Bible, by the way. He always wins. He's that good at it. And so he debates with the woman. And finally he says, you worship the God you don't even know. And I won't go into the whole history of the Samaritans, but they are not of the people of Abraham. And he says, we worship the God that we do know. But everything is changing. And the fact that Jesus is talking to her is proof of it. God is going to make peace with his people throughout the world. Samaritans, Jewish people, Africans, Romans, etc. And outwards. And outwards. And then for all of that, she asked the most simple of questions. The question that, quite frankly, everyone in Israel at the time is asking, deep down under their breath, are you the Messiah? Are you the Christ? Are you the one that's going to save us? And he gives her something he gives so few people. He answers the question. Yes, he is. He has come to make peace between that woman and God. He has come to make peace between you and God and me and God. And once that peace is established, our peace between the two of us will continue on. I actually, this Sunday was, before all this was happening, was going to do the uh, giving of the peace that everyone gives to one another, that historic practice. I won't do it. I'm not that dangerous of a human being. But that's where it comes from. One final story. In 1555, there was a Christian by the last name of Riley. And if you don't know much about history, in the 1550s, 60s, and so on, the Christians were kind of killing each other. Talk about no peace. And Riley was going to go to be burnt at the stake for preaching the gospel. And his brother showed up at the jail the night before to be with him, to comfort him, to make sure his brother was cared for before he would be martyred the next day. And they, uh, as they sat in a jail cell, Riley turned to his brother and said, you can go home. I'm tired. I'd like to get a good night's sleep. He goes, how can you have a good night's sleep? You're going to be martyred tomorrow, executed tomorrow, murdered tomorrow, burnt at the stake tomorrow. And he looks at him, his brother and goes, I'm going to be with Christ tomorrow. We have peace with God. We're not at war with him. In fact, it's deeper than that. We are now God's family, his children. Jesus calls you his brothers and sisters. He calls you his bride. He has made peace with you. Thanks be to God he has. 
Because that woman at the well, and I didn't read the rest of the story, after she was made peace with Christ, her world changed. And it was for the better. Your world has changed. It is for the better. You have been made peace with God, for Jesus has done it. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds on Christ Jesus. Amen.